San Francisco is full of hills. Big ones, small ones, curvy ones, ones with stairs, and ones that make you go, whoa, right before gravity pulls your car down straight into the abyss. As the song goes, I left my hill in San Francisco. Is that how the song goes? It doesn't matter how the song goes. What matters is that San Francisco has maybe the most bonkers topography of any city, anywhere. 47 square miles and not a single neighborhood is completely flat. There isn't exactly an official city sanctioned list for what the steepest streets are, but fellow data nerd Stephen Von Worley took it upon himself to scour the city for the steepest of them all. And if his calculations are correct, these are the steepest streets in San Francisco. And I think the best thing to do when you have a list like this is to test it. So that means we're gonna visit the 10 steepest hills in San Francisco and find out just how hard the climb really is. Let's go. Whoa. Okay. And here's the first one on our list. High atop the city on Knob Hill, Broadway above Taylor Street gives us a fantastic unobstructed view of the Bay Bridge and the Financial District skyline. In fact, from this perspective, none of the city's shiny new high-rises are even visible. It's almost like a little time machine here, powered by a staggeringly steep 31% incline. Actually, before we go any further, let's talk about how these hills are even measured in the first place. Officially, a hill's steepness is determined by its grade, which is the ratio of its rise to its run. It's usually expressed as a percentage and is used on road signs all over the world. In other words, if a slope rises 15 meters vertically and travels a distance of 100 meters horizontally, its grade would be 15 over 100, or 15%, which is steep enough to deter most city planning commissions from building pretty much anything. But remember, this is San Francisco we're talking about, where we hate anything flat, and where the hills are basically just minor inconveniences in pursuit of the best views in town. Next up is our fallen champion of San Francisco's hills, Filbert between Leavenworth and Hyde. Hey, remember that time I talked about the best views in town? Yeah, this one might be it. With a view fit for a desktop wallpaper, Filbert was once heralded as the steepest street in SF, and still shows up as the first search result on Google, but nowadays it finds itself sharing the glory of sixth place with three other streets. 22nd between Vicksburg and Church, 24th between Dejaro and Rhode Island, and Ripley between Peralta and Alabama. Their respective locations in Dolores Heights, Petrero Hill, and Bernal Heights are far away from the scenic Knob Hill views, but their slopes hit just the same. All four of them clock in with a 31.5% grade, and except for Ripley Street, feature a set of stairs to climb in lieu of a sidewalk. So if 31.5% means nothing to you, I get it, the numbers alone can be a little vague, but to put these numbers into perspective, the United States federally funded highways have a maximum grade between 4 and 6%. Southern California's famed Grapevine Highway has a grade of 5%, and even that can be a struggle for the semi-trucks that drive through it. But before that scares any of you away from driving the city's 30% hills, you should remember that while extreme steepness may be terrifying, it's typically a short-lived experience. Kind of like our next street, a one-way dead end atop SF's Sunnyside District. Baden Street maxes out at a whopping 34% grade, despite it not being a through street or even one that I can recommend you visit with your car. It's essentially just a driveway for the houses that reside alongside it. So while it's not exactly a real street, the walk up here, that's real. Whew. Okay, so let me mention something really quick. Being one of the steepest streets in a city known for its verticality, now that comes with its own kind of special prestige. If you're interesting enough and you also have a good enough vantage point, you can easily become a household name. Such was the case with Lombard Street. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Initially a 27% straight shot downhill, it was later determined too steep for all the horseless carriages driving around. Huh. Never would have guessed these vehicles weren't equipped for the hills. In 1922, it was rebuilt to reduce the incline to 16% and introduce the world to the eight switchbacks that currently make up the crookedest street in the world. So you can say Lombard Street attained its celebrity status out of convenience. Oh, and the postcard quality views help, I guess. 
But not all hills are created equal, and many of the streets on this list aren't going to make it into a Lonely Planet book. Some barely get the recognition they deserve because of how deep they're buried in San Francisco's less visited areas. Including these two streets, all the way out in the city's Bernal Heights neighborhood. And right up here, on Chapman Street, you get a two for one. 36% grade and a 37% grade, both within about two blocks of each other. One of them, a messily paved dead end that funnels into the gorgeous Bernal Heights Park. The other, a curvy little strip of road that simply dares you to test both your nerves and your car's brakes. And if you want an easy way to determine whether or not a hill is steep, just look at the marks at the bottom of the hill. That usually tells you everything you need to know. So if you're wondering who the hell puts the city on top of a bunch of hills like this, well, just ask the people who founded SF. For some odd reason, they didn't seem to mind. They were probably having too much fun panning for gold or riding around on their big ass bicycles to notice they had accidentally built a town on top of a bunch of sand dunes and rock formations, and now we're left with dozens of dizzying, calf straining hills to climb. Okay, I'm getting a little bit of vertigo up here, so it's back to the bustling, relatively low altitude North Beach District for number two on our list. And if you're expecting it to be a street with a beautiful sight line of Alcatraz lined with pizza parlors and farm lights, well, let's just say you're going to be a little disappointed. So right here is Romolo. This is a tiny alleyway off of Vallejo Street, and chances are, if you're not looking for it, you'll probably miss it. Just like I did about 20 minutes ago. As you all know, I love odd things, and this street is probably the oddest on this list for several reasons. First off, look at where it is. You want gorgeous bay views and picturesque cityscapes to go along with your hill? Nope. You get a dark alley and a bunch of pigeons as a backdrop to this 37.5% grade. And second, Romolo's incline has a maniacal two-axis tilt that makes it one of the most disorienting streets on this list to drive down. Now, I couldn't quite get the right angle for showing off the street's insane slope, but I guess I shouldn't feel too bad. I mean, Google Street View couldn't even figure out how to map it. Okay, time to make like this brave soul and get a move on to our final street. And it's back to Bernal Heights once more. Finally made it. Bradford Street above Tompkins Avenue. The steepest street in San Francisco is this little stretch of road right here. Okay, yeah, a little anticlimactic, but I mean, it's steep. Don't let the length fool you though. This little section of Bradford, all the way out where the 280 and 101 highways intersect, is constructed at a 41% grade. Had the entire block been built at this steepness, it would have been absolutely terrifying. But apart from the stairs and all the skid marks on the pavement, there's very little here that should scare you away. With some panoramic views of the docks, the freeway, and the Alamany Farmer's Market, this hill is just as good a view as any in San Francisco. And that's it. Those are the 10 steepest streets in San Francisco. Probably not the list you were expecting, was it? I'll admit it, individual roads are fun to measure and compare, but being the tallest or steepest means very little in the grand scheme of things. They're all just tiny bumps in a blanket of hills that keep the city feeling warm, inviting, and full of life. They coat San Francisco in a veneer that brings literal texture to it, and they dare the budding cyclist, the seasoned traveler, or even the thought-to-be-in-shape video producer to conquer these sky-high slopes, only to have us reach the peak and find out that there's another one waiting to be scaled. So the next time you're trudging up one of the city's many, many hills, and you start feeling that burning sensation in your legs, just remember, that is the city's way of saying, I love you. <laughs>